All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for coming today. So the Affordable Care Act uh, is a very complex piece of legislation. It's uh, going to dramatically alter um, the distribution of coverage among the non-elderly U.S. population. And it's also going to have an important effect on the affordability of coverage, particularly for low-income Americans. Um, as part of the legislation, the individual market for health insurance is going to change dramatically. Um, historically, this market has served as a residual market. It's essentially where individuals go to buy insurance if they do not have access to either employer-based coverage or public insurance. It has dynamic enrollment patterns, and you have a variety of individuals accessing that market, including young adults transitioning from college to their first job, the self-employed, and early retirees who are transitioning from uh, the labor market to Medicare. Um, this market also is known for having high administrative loading fees. Essentially, historical estimates put those loading fees because those administrative expenses and profits at almost 40% of premiums. Um, insurers have lots of concerns about adverse selection. In the vast majority of states, um, insurers have been able to medically underwrite individuals, including being able to deny individuals uh, the ability to purchase insurance if they have had pre-existing or serious health shocks. And this has been a small market relative to the other segments um, some recent work by myself and colleagues have found that survey estimates range from 10 million to roughly 25 million, and administrative data put the size of the market at about 7 million member years, exclusive of life insurers that sell coverage and insurers in California because they file differently. So there are really two phases of change to the individual market that come with the Affordable Care Act. The first were a series of early changes made in 2010 and 2011. Um, many of these have been in the press, but essentially changed certain coverage provisions of uh, policies relating to um, lifetime limits, annual limits, um, market for children, essentially not being able to deny coverage to children with pre-existing conditions, and then also providing some um, changes to cost sharing around certain types of preventive services. And perhaps most notable for insurers was the passage and implementation of medical loss ratio regulation, which basically requires insurers operating in the individual market, uh, requires them that 80% of their premiums go toward medical claims and quality improvement expenses, and so a maximum of 20% can go toward administrative costs. The other phase of, uh, the second phase of changes to the individual market is going to start in 2014 with the introduction of insurance exchanges. Essentially, the individual market is going to straddle both exchanges and what we consider an outside market. Estimates by the CBO made in March of this year um, suggest that by 2016, approximately 20 million Americans will obtain insurance within exchanges the vast majority of which will be subsidized private coverage for low-income Americans. Exchanges are going to be organized marketplaces. They're going to have some important functions around certifying health plans uh, for minimum standards, um, creating an enrollment process, trying to coordinate between um, their existing public insurance programs and exchange enrollment, and finally coordinating um, the subsidies, the premium and cost sharing subsidies that will be available to individuals that have incomes of less than 400% of poverty. That's kind of within exchanges, but there is also, um, the insurers will also be allowed to operate and to offer insurance in the, uh, to individuals outside of exchanges. And this is an area there where there's still a lot of discussion happening about what states will and will not allow insurers to do outside of the exchange. Um, there will be several other changes to products and premium setting within exchanges as well as outside of exchanges beginning in 2014. Uh, this includes the introduction of modified community rating. 
of premiums. So historically, um, as I said, most states have allowed insurers to medically underwrite premiums, taking into account a person's health status. That will change um, in 2014. Uh, plans will also be required to be guaranteed issue, so no one can be denied based on pre-existing conditions, and guaranteed renewable. Um, there will also be a set of minimum benefits called essential benefits that will be required. These are basically those that would be typically found in an employer-based plan. And there will be standardization around um, kind of tied to the actuarial value or the proportion of um, expenses covered by the plan for a standard population. Now, interestingly, um, the community rating guarantee issue, essential benefits, and actuarial values will apply to plans offering in both the exchange and outside. Um, there will also additionally be um, risk adjustment that will go inside as well as outside. So there's some things that tie uh, these kind of segments together. Um, one thing to note that I've been asked a lot about is that uh, for young adults, we want them in the risk pool. One uh, plan that will be offered only within exchanges are catastrophic plans for young adults, those who are under 30 years of age, and those that would be exempt from the individual mandate given their income. Um, as states go forward in the implementation process related to exchanges, uh, they're encountering lots of decisions to be made. Um, the decision to create an exchange or not. Right now, 15 states have established exchanges. Another 18 are studying options, including Minnesota. Um, and some states have said, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to let the federal government come in and um, do that for us. There's issues of governance, of whether or not to pool together individual and small group employer segments. Um, those are both eligible for exchanges. And then lots and lots of operational issues with respect to how to um, coordinate between Medicaid, existing Medicaid programs, and in exchange enrollment, uh, particularly because there's a lot of individuals who will move back and forth who will be because of income fluctuations. And then finally, um, issues with regarding how insurers will be regulated both inside and outside of exchanges. So I thought I would wrap up by just proposing some questions that I've been thinking about with, pertaining to the individual market. So one of the selling points of exchanges was that they would lead to lower administrative costs. Essentially, you're creating a web portal. You're going to reduce the shopping costs for consumers to be able to buy their insurance. You're going to give them price and quality information and standardized benefits. And you're going to remove from consideration medical underwriting, um, only having some modified parameters. So one question is, how much lower will loading fees be in the individual market? Again, historically, they were you know, his estimates put it at 40%. The medical loss ratio regulation basically constrains it to 20%. But how, how low can they go? <laughs> how much more efficient can uh, this market get in terms of, uh, in terms of um, policies? Also, kind of how is this inside and outside uh, the uh, exchange going to work in practice? Um, will insurers try to game? How, you know, how can regulations try to mitigate that? Um, what will be the role of brokers and agents given exchanges? Brokers and agents play a, have played a very large role in the individual market historically, and now again moving toward a more web-based system, um, what role will they play? They tend to, anecdotally, um, you know, there's a lot of concern that they, um, those commissions are expensive and they add to the premiums. And then, of course, how will the price of coverage change given all these, you know, all these um, new uh, regulations going into effect. John Gruber from MIT did some consulting work for the state, and he actually estimated that given the minimum, given the changes uh, in the minimum actuarial value requirements, uh, the incorporation of the risk pool, changes in who will buy individual coverage, and increased competition as a result of the exchanges could lead to about a 29% increase in premiums overall. Of course, many of those individuals getting coverage will be subsidized but the overall, um, there will be so many different changes occurring. That's his best estimate. Of course, it's really hard to model, I will um, say. And, uh, and then finally, how will consumers make decisions about health plans? We'll have a lot of people who are uninsured moving into buying insurance. We don't really know much about them from research in terms of how they make their choices, how they shop, and what things they consider. And finally, how stable will exchanges be? Will there be adverse selection? 
and um, how much churning will occur between Medicaid and uh, subsidized coverage within exchanges. Thank you very much, and we'll turn it over to Roger.